pull yourself up a chair, and let's discuss the five different strategies to handle Aces and Pies fitment on Magento or BigCommerce. It's funny how things change over time. I mean, really. The only constant in life is change. No matter how bad we want it to, nothing ever stays the same. For example, each year that goes by, I just keep getting older and older and better looking. And that's not fair to you folks that aren't aging so gracefully, but that's life. Yeah, right. Another maybe slightly more realistic and relevant example of things changing over time are the capabilities of e-commerce platforms. If you'd asked me a couple of years ago, I'd have said that doing automotive e-commerce properly on a SaaS platform like BigCommerce wasn't a good idea. It was extremely limiting, it wouldn't scale, it'd just be a nightmare of compromises. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's no longer the case. Not only is it now possible, it's actually pretty easy to do it extremely well. On the flip side, Magento and that open source flexibility are always great for complex use cases like automotive. Before we get too deep into the five different methods of handling Fitbit, let's set the scene for those that perhaps don't understand the complexities that come with automotive e-commerce. In the early days of e-commerce, the automotive industry had a real problem. It was nearly impossible to manage the data. All of the manufacturers were storing data differently. That made it very difficult on merchants that sold products from numerous sources and caused the industry to really fall behind the growing e-commerce market. The Auto Care Association stepped in and developed a couple of data standardizations as well as some applicable databases to help. ACEs and PIEs. Here you go, boys. Always have your pie. Don't get excited. This isn't a bakery. It's not that kind of pie. PIEs, which is an acronym for Product Information Exchange Standard, is a format that stores product information. The companion to that is ACES, or Aftermarket Catalog Exchange Standard, and that's how you store fitment information related to those products. There's a lot more to ACEs and PIEs than we'll talk about here in this video, and I'm not a freaking library. So Google it if you're curious and you just want to know more. For this video, I bring it up because I'm assuming you're having to deal with ACEs and PIEs data. If not, there's still some useful information here, but the equation may be a bit different for you. Just hit me up if you aren't sure, and I'm happy to discuss it. Each of these options we're discussing has strengths and weaknesses and may be the best for you, depending on your situation. So I'm not ranking them. I'm just telling you the strengths and weaknesses of each approach and you make the decision that's best for your business. The first method I wanna discuss is utilizing categories for your fitment. This strategy is pretty much exactly the same regardless of what e-commerce platform you're using. The good in this method, it is by far the absolute simplest and cheapest way to handle fitment on your website. The bad, well, it won't work for most of you. If you focus on a small subset of automobiles, you could probably get away with just using categories for each car. Using this method and having a pleasant user experience really depends on how many cars you support and the size of your catalog. I always recommend going with the simplest and cheapest route that works for your business. And there's no sense in overthinking it. Don't unnecessarily complicate your life. So if this works for you, it works for you. You can always add more complexity later if you're just feeling frisky. I just feel frisky, that's all. On the flip side though, don't be the guy that holds onto this method for way too long. Your user experience really starts to degrade after five or 10 top level categories. Where I typically see this used effectively is in situations where your customers understand the generations of the cars you support. For example, if you're only selling BMW aftermarket parts, you could have top level categories for E30s or E36s. If you're on the fence about whether this method would work for you, then it probably won't. In that case, Let's discuss some of the other options that might. The next method we need to talk about is leaning on third-party PIM tools with a tightly coupled integration for Fitment. There are a lot of PIM or product information management tools out there. The SEMA Data Co-op is a fairly common one that most of you will be familiar with. These PIM tools, if focused on automotive, can have a ton of useful features to help you manage ACEs and PIES data. When it comes to leveraging them to handle fitment on your e-commerce site though, there are a few ways you can go about it, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. Some of these platforms, including the SEMA Data Co-op, offer you the ability to pull that data in real time to the front end of your website. Now this could be through some API call, a widget they provide you, or some simple JavaScript call. This method, depending on how it's done, can be a lot simpler for you to implement than some of the more robust implementations we'll discuss shortly. You don't have to worry about getting all of the fitment data to your e-commerce platform and displaying it. You instead rely upon the PIM to provide that functionality. The technical details 
details of this integration will vary depending on the platform you choose. You might struggle a bit more with this on Big Commerce because you don't have that deep level of power and control that you have with Magento. I am very, very powerful. Once you get it all figured out though, the end result will be pretty similar. This, unfortunately, is my absolute least favorite method of providing fitment because of some glaring weaknesses. First, you often don't have much control over your user experience. You can do only whatever functionality your PIM of choice provides. If your needs are basic, or if you're just getting started, then that may be just fine. But this method doesn't make much sense at all on an open source platform like Magento. I mean, this is the way you go. Seriously, what are you doing? Come on, man. The whole reason you chose an open source platform is for that control and flexibility. And this method takes all or most of that out of your hands. I mean, if you find yourself in this situation, you might want to rethink your life choices because it looks like you made a mistake somewhere. This approach is also what we call tightly coupled. And that means that your PIM being online and accessible is critical to your website staying online and usable. And this adds risk to your e-commerce business. And more times than not, the hosting environment for an application like a PIM isn't as robust and scalable as your e-commerce platform. If you think you might experience a sudden surge in traffic, do you wanna have to worry and test if that PIM's gonna be able to keep up? Nah, I'll pass. You go ahead though. If you decide to go this route, don't call me when that crap fails. I mean, unless you wanna talk about doing it a different way. Taking all of that into consideration, this is an approach that I'd personally stay away from. But again, I'm not judging. Just note that I'm gonna give you a little grief when you call me to discuss better solutions. The third fitment option we need to talk about are fitment apps and modules. Now these could be third-party apps and modules that you found on the Magento and BigCommerce marketplaces, or you may actually custom write them for your application. On Magento, these are great in that they are also open source. So you have that power and control that you're so desperately craving. And you could tweak them or mold them to whatever you need them to be. So even if they don't have everything your heart desires, they can at least be a good starting point to jumpstart you down the right path and save you a few dollars. On big commerce, the strengths aren't quite as strong for this method. I mean, they're a great solution if their functionality aligns with your needs, but the nature of SaaS being what it is, there isn't as much flexibility in this route as with Magento. The downside is that most of these apps or modules are built in a vacuum, focused on the problem at hand, but not exactly the industry as a whole, or in many cases, designed to support a wide variety of use cases, not just automotive. So they really aren't optimized for ACEs and PIES data or the auto care database. As a result, it sometimes feels like you're hacking them to get what you want. But with some effort on the integration to your data provider or PIM, you can usually make them work for you. The biggest weakness of these modules is that they often don't perform very well at scale. If you start adding tens or hundreds of thousands of products into your site with the associated fitment data, it could grind these things to a snail's pace, and that's not good because life moves pretty fast. The next option I want to discuss is utilizing Elasticsearch coupled with custom front-end functionality. In my opinion, this only really makes sense with Magento because it already leverages Elasticsearch, but you could technically, with some work, also do this with BigCommerce. I don't know why you would, but whatever you wanna do. Magento's search capabilities had long been a weakness of the platform. With Magento 2, they've relied on Elasticsearch to improve that functionality. In the latest releases, they've dropped their internal search altogether. So there's a solid chance you're already using Elasticsearch anyway. So this gives you the control that you're looking for and potentially, if done well, much better performance than just the module route. Elasticsearch is designed to hold, index, and access large amounts of data very quickly and efficiently. So why not take advantage of it? The downside is that this is the most technically complex route and can be quite expensive to build and maintain. If you don't need all this flexibility, and let's face it, you probably don't, then why not take an easier route? Relax, take it easy. I get it. I'm a control freak too. I mean, who doesn't want all the power and flexibility in the world? No limitations, baby. The world is your oyster. Enjoy it. Whatever your vision of world domination is, you're the king and this website is your kingdom. It's good to be king. Just for a while. Just remember, heavy is the head that wears the crown. A kingdom is an expensive proposition. A lot of people overdo it with visions of grandeur only to find that it's draining their energy and their bank accounts and they're really only using 10% of the power they're paying for. A little poem for you because I'm a freaking poet. Just make sure you're gonna use it 
if you choose it. Otherwise, with a lot of your money, you will lose it. The fifth option that I've intentionally saved for the end is my personal favorite, and that's relying on a third-party search provider for Fitment functionality. It, just like all of these options though, has some trade-offs. The good, the search provider does all the heavy lifting. A basic data integration and a module install and you can be up and running and ready to start selling product. And this requires considerably less effort than most of these other options and that saves you time and money. As long as you choose your provider carefully, you can get a highly performing site without any of the technical complexities that come from some of these other options. Well, that's nice. But those of you on Magento will be lacking that complete open source control. As a result, you need to do your research and make sure the provided functionality is what you're actually looking for. A lot of the search providers can handle automotive fitment data. It's good though, to find one that's really focused on the automotive market and flexible in case you need adjustments to their offering. Shoot me an email if you need some suggestions on the partners that we use and trust. The other big downside is that this approach is also tightly coupled. If the search provider goes down, your site goes down. But in this situation, it's a bit different in that most of these providers are also accustomed to handling the scale of e-commerce because they're really designed from the ground up for this exact scenario. A little pro tip here if you go this way and you're worried about it. If your site is extremely high volume and high availability is critical, develop a backup plan that you can temporarily shift to if their platform's ever having issues. It just might lower your stress level on what could otherwise be a very bad day. Those are the five ways to handle vehicle fitment on Magento and Big Commerce that come to the top of my mind. Let me know in the comments if there's any I missed or if you have any questions. It's always a pleasure talking to you, but it's time for me to get back to my bourbon. My name is TJ Campbell and I'm the CEO and founder of Jamerson, where we help businesses like yours take those next steps in their e-commerce journey. If you're ready to improve your business and looking for help, go to jamerson.com forward slash go and I look forward to speaking with you. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.